Now, if UKIP caused an earthquake in British politics at the general election, it wasn't the one they thought. One MP, down from the two they had, a leader who failed again to get into Westminster, and infighting in the days after. But four million votes, 120 second places, not to be ignored. So where next for the party? Charles has been taking a look. It wasn't as he walked to the stage very late in the general election process that Nigel Farage knew he'd failed to win the seat of Thanet South. But much earlier, people within UKIP were admitting behind the scenes he was struggling a week before. Some said it had been unwise of him to declare that if he lost, he'd step down as leader, galvanising anti-UKIP votes. Others blamed his reliance on a very tight coterie of advisers, whispering he was under threat from rivals. What nobody expected was that he would resign. I should be writing uh, to the UK uh, UKIP national executive in a few minutes uh, saying that I am standing down as leader of UKIP. Um, I will recommend uh, that pro tem uh, they put in place as acting leader Suzanne Evans, who I think has emerged uh, from this campaign as an absolute tower of strength within UKIP. But that lasted about two days. He unresigned and then it all got a bit nasty. His economic spokesman and once rock-solidly loyal protégé Patrick O'Flynn attacked him personally in the Times. Douglas Carswell, their only MP, argued with him over short money. His close advisor Raheem Kassam left his post but now another close advisor, Matt Richardson, the party secretary, has had the resignation he sent in at the time turned down and is back in post. And Suzanne Evans, who had emerged as this tower of strength, has had her policy responsibility removed. Every time he gives a little bit of power away, he does it for six months and then he wants it back. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like being the one who doesn't get the final say on everything. And he keeps trying to paint out we're not a one-man band, but he sure as hell acts like it is. Farage is very much back in charge. And as this phone footage from just yesterday shows, Raheem Kassam is by no means ostracised. So is he right that Farage was the victim of a plot? There was no plot. People around Nigel Farage were telling him, oh, there's a plot, they're all out to get you. They weren't. They weren't coordinated. There was no attempt to get rid of Nigel, apart from the attempt which he put in his own book when he said, if I don't win a seat in Westminster, I'll be gone. That was the only plot ever against Nigel Farage's leadership. This isn't about plots, but a future direction. Does UKIP use an EU referendum to boost its party appeal or join cross-party to gain Brexit from the EU? Does Nigel Farage accept some in his party do appeal to voters that he doesn't? And how much more do they focus policy now for the once Labour-supporting white working class they won in the North? The only clear thing is that final decisions on those questions seem back in very familiar hands. That was Giles, this is Suzanne Evans. Uh, you were technically UKIP's leader for three days. What did you achieve in that time? Well, I wasn't, actually. Uh, because, you weren't? No, uh, sadly not. Uh, Nigel actually said, you know, he had to ask the NEC for permission mm. to put me in place. And as we know, the NEC meeting that actually happened subsequently, uh, his resignation wasn't accepted. So you so, weren't leader at so all? I wasn't actually leader. So I had a lovely well, Saturday off. Uh, I did have a chat with Nigel on the Sunday. We had a lovely conversation mm. on the Sunday, and I said about what, what I might do Did you urge him to forward. stay? I did, actually, yes. Yes, because he, he phoned me in the morning and said, uh, I'm going to resign. I said, you really don't need to do this. And... Uh, as I think was expressed in your report there, a few of us thought that he shouldn't have made that uh, mm. offer to resign in his book because okay. he's achieved so much. You know, look at but, where UKIP is now. One MP, okay. yes, that is disappointing, but uh, so many second places, All right. nearly four million votes. He had no need to even think about but resigning. Let's look at that rather frenetic post-election period. Mr Farage resigns, then unresigns. Uh, two advisers quit, very close to him. You resigning from your position, I didn't or you actually, stepped my, down. My, my contract just right, came but to you an were end. wrote the manifesto, and you stepped yes. down. Patrick O'Flynn quitting. How damaging was that period uh, to the party? I think it was very damaging to uh, some of us who were within it, who found it all very traumatic, and I personally found it a very difficult time, inevitably. I think our members got very upset about it. How much it actually is going to impact on us going forward, I think I, I, I think we will very quickly get over it. I think we have got over it, actually. Uh, you know, I'm still here. I'm still Deputy Chairman. As Owen Bennett said in your report, there was no plot. It was no. whisperings and uh, various people, I think, who perhaps... Uh, um... At that time, though, you, you complained that Mr Farage had been badly advised. Let me just run a, a clip of what you said at the time.
I don't think anyone hates anyone. I generally don't. I think we've had some problem with some advisors around Nigel who very much uh, kept him in their pocket, if you like, and I think he's uh, had too much influence from them. But they've gone and now. they have now gone. Well, but in fact, they haven't, have Apparently they? Apparently not. No. Uh, Raheem Kassan <laughs> and Matthew Richardson were the two you were talking about. We now learn that Matthew Richardson is returning as party secretary. These are the people that you thought badly advised Mr Farage. They're back. Yeah, I gather Matt Richardson, in fact, never, never left. Um, I've, I'm told that we, he, I think he offered his resignation, but it never actually got as far as being officially... Put seem, on, that seems to table. be a cultural trait in your party, of offering resignations that never happen. <laughs> well, I, it's not, not one that I think we particularly... particularly uh, Value. I am told but I mean, you are the deputy to... chairman of the party, so I mean, don't you have any say on people like Matthew Richardson coming back or I don't, staying as party actually, secretary? No, my role as deputy chairman because I'm not a member of the National Executive Committee, and my role as deputy chairman has always been one uh, that has had a specific uh, remit hmm. to present party policy and to act as a spokesman for the party. Well, how and do I you don't have any how do you move on the running of the party with the same leader and the same people? advising them you thought badly. How does the UKIP move on? I think that those of us who feel that he is being badly advised simply have to perhaps be braver in saying that we're, as and if and when we think he's being badly advised. Was, but I think that, that Nigel himself has un, uncertainly learnt, learnt from this. Was he badly uh, advised think, on the shock and awful? Yes. Yes, I, I, I think so. I think there is absolutely a debate to be had about health tourism. It's a very crucial debate. It's one that is uh, helping to uh, put immense pressure on the NHS. Mm -hmm. There's an ethical consideration about it as well, about uh, you know people who have paid in for years on end into the tax and national mm -hmm. insurance system in this country, and when they get cancer, they can't get the drugs that they right. need, but, as opposed to somebody coming from overseas. But, but proposing but to are, bar people with HIV from entering the UK, it. was that wrong? There, the, 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 actual, the actual proposal wasn't. And in fact, if you look at the history of this issue. Was he wrong the, to raise it in the way he did? Uh, he might have. He, I think he probably could have put it in a slightly uh, more, um, how can I put it, collegiate way, a way that perhaps would have brought more people on board. It was a very stark, stark way of putting it. But it is an issue that is important. And you, I absolutely would defend You've on called that. on the party to diversify and professionalise itself. In what way has it done that since the election? I don't really think we've had time yet. Uh, and also, of course, the main focus of the party now is actually fighting the EU referendum. And we are undoubtedly best placed to do that. We, have the, we, are, we are the only British party in politics who knows that every single member is opposed to uh, staying in the European Union. And that is an enormous thing that binds us together. And we are going to be a force to be reckoned with. But you will know that, that the forward. people who want us to stay in the European Union are hoping that Nigel Farage is the man that leads the out campaign because well, they think he's a divisive Marmite figure. <laughs> I think uh, Nigel himself has not called to lead the out campaign and in fact only yesterday he was saying that it might very well be that a figure to lead the out campaign comes from outside politics. So would you advise him not to lead the out campaign? I would advise him to take a very significant part in that, it. I understand I that but important. as you know that wasn't what I asked you. Would you advise him though that for the greater good of the cause from your point of view that he shouldn't lead the out campaign? I think Nigel is a very divisive character in terms of the way he is perceived. He's not divisive as a person, but the way he is perceived is as having strong views that, uh, that divide people. So in that sense, uh, I, I think he is right. I think it will be somebody else who actually fronts it. But I, I actually, fundamentally, I don't see why we need to have any single one person to front it anyway. I think it would be much better to almost have a, a, a sort of a joint leadership campaign on it. Why should one person front it? Why shouldn't it be Nigel alongside someone from the Labour Party, from the Conservative Party and perhaps from business But when well? it comes that, to the big final TV debate, a figure in or out, network television, the mm. country watching, mm. you have to pick somebody. Who should it be? I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll have to wait and see okay. who does actually come to the fore and who... It's, it's not just about what I think about, what UKIP thinks about, what the party thinks. It's about finding somebody who can actually convince that that part of the electorate uh, who's not already made their mind okay. up to vote for no. All right. Fancy a peerage? Uh, not particularly. I could put a word in for you. No, no, no. <laughs> would you put one in for me? I would you, I would you like me to put a word in for you? <laughs> Can you do that? The Queen watches all the time. Does she? <laughs> I don't talk about I wouldn't raise your her. hopes too I'm much. I'm not, don't uh, worry, Suzanne. I'm certainly not. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'm not sure it's one you could make, but thanks.